The bottom line, <laughs> like in anything, is used skilled, qualified, and trained engineers. It's, uh, I don't want to go into health and safety lecture, but it's amazing how many people that are skilled, are qualified, are trained, actually lack any common sense. Um, over and over again we've seen it. Two of the things that I saw recently um, in, a, in, a, in a village location, behind a row of houses, uh, behind the drives of a, a row of houses, no curb on the opposite side of the road, and there's a trench. There's no barricades, there's no signage, nothing. The cars reversing out of the drive can go straight into the ditch. Um, fortunately, local council never picked that up and uh, we managed to do something about it. But simple common sense. The other thing that I see all the time, and, and, and that's the tube. That tube, the fibre is going through there, four fibre unit, at around 50 metres per minute. In the field, that flies out. It's amazing how many times someone will pick the tube up and see if it's coming. If that hits you in the eye, that's going through your eye, right into the back of your brain. So, not a lecture, but the sort of stuff that you see out in the field, and it's important that if you're involved in these sort of projects, that you have an eye on health and safety, uh, and make sure that the people that you're employing actually know what they're doing. Civils is where all the costs are. Uh, I'm sure it's been talked about already today, but uh, it's, uh, it's where uh, you see all of the expense, or most of the expense, and an awful lot of the problems. Um, if you don't get the right people involved, there is going to be a risk that you, you dig up some utilities. If you dig up utilities, it's going to be expensive. The other thing that we see on civils is folks using contractors that don't know what they're doing. So they're not familiar with the importance of the radiuses of ducting. If you don't have the right radius, if the radius is too narrow, it's going to be difficult to blow. Equally, the quality of the backfill is poor. It's absolutely vital that the base of the trench is, is firm and it's even. It's very, very easy for contractors just to throw backfill in and not do it to any standard. If you do that, you're going to get two problems. One, you may get short-term issues with the blowing of the fibre because there's going to be a kink in it like that. And when you blow, when there's trouble in the vertical, vertical plane, um, it slows down and it gets stuck. But it gets stuck that you can't pull it out. And if you can't pull it out, you're going to have to go out into the field, dig a hole, recover it all, you may have damaged fibre and start blowing again. It's completely unnecessary expense. The second thing is over a period of time, when the backfill's over the top, those, those gaps are going to sag and sag and sag, and over a period of time you're going to get a degradation in the quality of the signal that's working through that fibre. The, um, the simplest and most common thing I see, I suppose, from a civil's perspective is fibre or ducting in the ground that isn't capped. If it's not capped, water can get in, animals can get in, stones can get in, and you end up in a situation where you're not able to blow. You've got to get the right people on the field with the right equipment. This equipment is fantastic, relatively straightforward to use. If you're using or blowing mini cable, things become much more difficult. If you don't know what you're doing, you're going to very quickly, very easily damage the fibre. If you're using CBS or Plumatas type blowing machines, then if you over screw the torque, the cable's going to kink and you're going to have to replace that. Um, absolutely vital that you use the right equipment. Also that you use the right compressors. Um, if you're blowing mini cable, 15 bar, you need a compressor with an after cooler. You don't want condensation. Water in the tubing is going to cause you problems. It's absolutely vital that the integrity of your network is sound. Don't take shortcuts on testing. Make sure you have a detailed specification. It's no good building a network and then you go and connect your users and you find that your users can't use it or it's not, not as fast as they expect it to be. So have a proper test specification. Have someone complete that. Make sure that the labelling in the cabinets is done properly. Make sure that if um, you have arrangements for maintenance, if a cable gets cut or someone pulls a cable in the house, who's going to fix it? Who's qualified to do that? How are they going to get paid? 
all that side of your network, the quality of your network, needs to be thought of in advance. The bottom line is when it comes to your network, you need skilled, qualified and trained folks. The, uh, the thing that you need to think about is what have these folks done before? What experience have they got? What qualifications? What equipment they, do they use? What equipment have they bought themselves? What investment have they made in this technology? Really important. If they've invested in compressors, in OTDDRs, in blowing equipment, they've spent in the region perhaps of 50 to 100,000 pounds on equipment to do this job properly. If they've done that, it, I'm pretty certain they're a bona fide company because they've taken the time to do it properly. In terms of qualifications, um, City and Guilds 3667, fantastic all round qualification for people dealing with fibre. Um, that's available at a number of places, but it's a good benchmark. If people have got 3667, you know they understand fibre, they understand connectivity, they understand splicing. There are also awards, for example, like BTEC Level 3 in passive optical networks and using this equipment. There are suppliers of those courses, and you can go to the likes of MTEL and Prismium um, to get that sort of training. 